My mom grew up in a small town in Mexico where everyone pretty much knows each other. I believe the population was around 350 at the time, 80s. Around the time of the events, she was 10 years old. I don't know if it runs in the family, but at some time in our life, every single member of my family has experienced something paranormal. Well, here are some of my mom's stories that I think are worth telling. She lived in a small adobe house. It was a super small home for the five of them, my grandparents, my uncle, my aunt, and my mom. The kitchen was located on the front part of the house and the rooms were on the back. There was a wall that divided the kitchen from the rest of the house and to get to either, or there was a door inside the house, kind of how some hotel rooms have a door to get to the other room. While that was their house, they also had a window in one of the rooms so they could see to the kitchen. The kids would sleep in one room and my grandparents in the other one. Where my mom and my aunt and uncle would sleep was the room with the window. My mom tells me that at night they would hear the chairs from the kitchen being dragged and all the things on the table would get smacked off the table. In one occasion the noises were very loud it woke her and her siblings up they were curious although they knew what was making the noise they looked through the window and they saw a small shadow dragging a chair across the room. She said they ran to their parents room and slept the night there the noises went on all night she recalls. They believed it was my great-great-grandma's dad that would mess around with them because he lived in that house before it was passed on to my grandma. Another time she said she awoke during the night and she looked to the side of the bed where she saw a big black dog with red eyes she went under the blanket and didn't come out until the am. She always believed she saw the devil in the shape of a dog. She also saw what looked like a monkey hanging and swinging from the door of her room. Those are some few stories I remembered her telling me. Now some of my stories. It was Thanksgiving 2006. We had dinner with the family. I was 12 years old. I got mad at my mom because I wanted to go to the mall for Black Friday with her and my aunt and she said no so I left to my room. Me and my little sister shared a room. The room was small. We had a bunk bed, those metal bunk beds that make hella noise when you move and turn. While I was watching Chicken Little, it was probably 12 a.m. Once the movie finished, I turned off the light and tried to sleep. I was laying down facing the wall I had my eyes closed trying to go to sleep when the bed started creaking like somebody had laid down someone really heavy. I turned around and the empty side of the mattress was sink down like someone was laying down I freaked out but couldn't move I tried to scream and I couldn't I was so scared I started to cry I closed my eyes really tight and I let the loudest scream out my little sister. And cousin came into the room and turned the light on my sister hugged me and then I told them what happened. When they turned the light on you could see on the bed sheets all messed up like someone was laying there that was definitely one experience that stuck with me throughout my life i've had experiences with the paranormal usually just seeing shadows and hearing steps or someone trying to open the doors back in mexico we had my aunt and uncle my mom's siblings stayed over at our home when they came to visit from here us to mexico i remembered one occasion my aunt told my sister that if she didn't behave la mano paluta the hairy hand, will come and get her. She freaked my sister out so much. At night, we had two beds in one room. I shared bed with mom and my aunt and sis shared a bed. At night, my aunt was awoke by tapping. She said she woke up and heard tapping following was three knocks on our room's door. She believed that had happened to her because she was trying to scared my sister. All right, so this story has been told to me by my mom a few times. And every single time, I still get that creepy eerie feeling that someone is watching me. My mom is from a small town in Mexico located in Zacatecas. When she was around 14, she had the habit of waking her mom up to go to the restroom since it was an older home and the restroom was located outside. My mom tells me that it was around 3 a.m. when she woke up and felt the need to use the restroom urgently. So she began calling out for her mom. After a while of her mom not responding, she began getting agitated and started screaming. At this point my mom turns around and at the foot of her bed she sees her mom standing there. She was wearing a white robe but had a very bleak expression on her face and both of her arms were extended. My mom said that she suddenly felt extremely cold and a huge sense of dread. She had never seen her mom wear a white robe. That's when she looked down and saw her mom's feet weren't touching the floor. At that moment she screamed and quickly threw the covers over her head. Her mom wearing something completely different runs in to find my mom shaking in her bed. Nobody believed my mom. Everyone told her it was a dream. Until a few days later, there was a power outage. During this, my mom and a few of her siblings with her parents all decided to sleep in the living room. At around the same time at 3 a.m., 
they heard the same undeniable wails of La Llorona down their street. None of them slept that night. Visiting family in Linares, Mexico long ago. When we were young we seen her as if she was floating low to the ground in a white dress going from house to house screaming and grunting at the house that wasn't unlocked or had open windows. As she drew closer to the house we could hear her breathing as if it were amplified. When she got to my stepsister's house she looked in the window but did not see us cause mom stuck us under the blanket and told us to be very still. We did not see her that night. But the next day going to Monterey, Mexico we seen her on side of the road all in white screaming. The look on her face as if she had been crying for hours and pale skin and soaking wet. No matter how much I try and block out things that seems to be the one that always comes to mind. We stayed out at the creek one night myself and a paranormal group I used to hunt with. While we were out we kept hearing someone crying and mumbling something we could not make it out we called out and it would stop for a minute or so as if it were trying to listen to us and see where we were and then it start again nothing happened most of the night. As we stopped to take a break we all sat in the bed of the truck looking out toward the creek. When it started to sprinkle and the crying started back up, in the distance we see someone walking, we think it's the owner of the land whom gave us access so we could experience it ourselves. While whomever it was floating so gently along the creek stood and reached out to us as if it were offering its hand to help us. For sure we thought it was Oldman Jesse, land owner. As it got closer it started to cross the creek, so we turned on the spotlight and seen it was a woman just not in white. She wore a dirty stained silk dress when we called to her she looked at us and reached out and started crying loud and breathing heavily. Team lead started the truck and started to drive off when we looked back she was moving faster than before getting closer as we got closer to the gate she stopped and stood there. She stood there and watched as if she was running us off or away from the creek. We called old man and told him we were done and leaving as he laughed at us asking if we had seen the women. When I explained to him what happened he said that she was trying to have us follow her back into the wooded area near the deep part of Creek. There is some backstory and I want to give a good description of the neighborhood this takes place in. My grandpa's house is an old red brick and cement single-story square house with a road in front running parallel. This gray brick road has a cement walkway on each side. There are similar looking houses in front and beside my grandpa's house. If you stand at the front door looking towards the road, across the street to the right side there is an 8-foot tall red brick wall and a giant mansion that looks like the Alamo building, the windows are open archways with no glass. It is 3 stories tall and is L-shaped and is the corner house. It stands abandoned for some time and my cousins have gone inside and had a scary encounter. I tagged along but that is another story. I wake up late at night in the cot, bed, and I look around the room. I feel wide awake as I look towards the fogged up window with the street light shining through. I feel the urge to find my older brother around age 15 who hangs out with his cool cousins on the left corner of the block. I open the door and walk towards the front door, it's not locked so I open it and step outside on the sidewalk. There is the sound of a slightly busy city but there is no one on the street, the stars are out tonight. I feel excited and start running left in the middle of the brick road. I get closer to the corner store where my brother hangs out but it looks closed. I stop and turn around and run back towards my grandpa's house. I think maybe he's gone the other way to the right of my grandpa's house. I start to get a little nervous as I pass my grandpa's house, I can see the giant brick gate of the mansion on my left hand side. The road is dimly lit up with a warm yellow glow from the street lamps. The lights seem to be spaced out because there is a dark section as I walk, the road begins to go uphill. I see someone standing at the top of the hill in the center of the road, my eyes adjust as I get closer. It is the silhouette of tall man wearing a large hat shaped like a flat mariachi hat. The figure is pitch black on the road standing still. I see the glowing red eyes staring back at me. I feel the evil and believe it is grinning at me. I turn around and run back towards my grandpa's house. I close the door and jump into bed and fall asleep as soon as I lay down. I never told my family about the encounter as I felt it would spoil the good time we were all having while visiting. I believe it was the devil that night, and after some research others have had a similar experience seeing a dark figure wearing a large hat. This happened a few years ago. I still remember it pretty clearly because it's so strange and I never really found an answer to what it was. I'm not an active user on Reddit either and at this point I figured I would just share my experience and see if anyone had similar stories or an explanation. Maybe just share your thoughts. Like I said this happened a couple years ago. It was during a visit to my grandmother in a small village in Mexico. To give some context my parents and I visited for about a week and during that week my mother's cousin also passed. 
He was in a car crash and the local government was deeply involved. Months later, it turns out he was actually murdered by the local cartel there. That really is a whole story in itself, but I decided to mention it because it did happen that same week we were visiting. As you can probably tell overall, that whole week was tragic and also extremely odd. Some background. It happened about a night before we got news about the passing. My uncle lives on the same plot of land my grandmother does and he owns a farm of chickens and roosters. My grandma's sister, the mother of the guy who passed, is technically their next door neighbor. They own the plot of land right next to my grandmother's. My grandmother's plot of land is actually adjacent to the local elementary school there. So her house isn't in the middle of nowhere, however she does have a good-sized plot of land that is surrounded by concrete walls for protection. The streets around her land only really gets foot traffic when school is in session. Given the climate at the time, any kind of foot traffic stops by sunset. The village itself is pretty poor and everyone is familiar with each other there. They have a few rich but no middle class. Most houses are about a colivant to shacks. My grandmother owns a concrete house that is decently sized but otherwise plain. Now that there's some background I'll get to the event. It was during the summer when my parents and I visited. I was on summer break and so were the schools there. My parents and I were the only people there visiting my grandmother at the time. Every night, time is taken to be sure all the doors are completely locked before heading to bed. There's three doors that lead to the outside, all are made of metal with also a mesh framed door to keep the bugs out. That night I distinctly remember asking my mom to help me lock the front door. It's a heavy metal door with a secure lock that I was having difficulties closing. We also checked to make sure the other doors were secured and locked. I'm going to mention the layout of my grandmother's house briefly since it is somewhat important. The first room you enter, which is the door I was having a hard time closing, is basically a room with a bunch of beds. To the right is what is referred to as the middle room, which is just another bedroom. It connects the first room to my grandmother's room. You can look into the middle room and also see the first room when both doors are left open. These two doors are usually left open because they are heavy and scrape augusent the concrete floor very loudly. Before heading to bed, I plugged my phone in the middle room to charge, which is where my dad was going to sleep in. My mom and I were sleeping in the same room with my grandmother. My mom and I shared a bed that was right next to the door that leads into the middle room. Right before falling all seep, I could see into the first room because the two doors were left open like always. I had no recollection of any nightmares or dreams. I basically slept pitch black until I woke up at an unknown time completely terrified. My eyes basically shot open and I had an indescribable sense of fear. The first thing I noticed was that the door next to me was completely shut. I didn't want to move even in the slightest. I didn't really know what to think, I felt too scared to even close my eyes. I just laid there completely still for an unknown amount of time. I came to the conclusion I would rather wait for the sun to come up than to close my eyes again. I was that scared. Eventually, I heard the chickens starting to make noise so I figured the sun was going to come up in the next few hours or so. However, I noticed the chickens were actually going crazy. Almost as if they were scared of something. This deepened my fear but I still laid there too scared to move. At this point, I was wondering why it hadn't woken up my mother or my grandmother who were both extremely light sleepers. I was the heavy sleeper in the family yet the chickens weren't waking either of them up. Eventually they all settled down and there was no sign of any sunlight. I occupied my time just listening to the air conditioner in the middle room. It's pretty old, the kind that you have to use a hose to water down. It makes a continuous noise and then occasionally sputters, but it ain't nosies are almost a routine. I could also hear the bed in the middle room creaking around which I figured my dad was just moving around in his bed. Again I couldn't see into the middle room, which I found odd that the door was closed. I am a heavy sleeper so I figured there was a possibility that I remained asleep while the doors were closed. I remained still for who knows how long but then I heard a noise I've never heard before. It was extremely loud and it came from the middle room. The volume was just as loud as a large bird but didn't sound anything like a bird. I was petrified and had no idea why it didn't wake anyone up. Again I can't even really describe the noise, it's nothing I've ever heard before. I still laid completely still long enough to listen to this nosy over and over. I wanted to think it was the air conditioner until that noise happened the same time. I wanted to think it was the creaking of the bed but eventually that same nosy also happened at the same time the bed was creaking. So it couldn't have been it either. I also want to mention that I didn't find it odd until later exactly how much the bed was creaking. At this point I just felt like I was crazy. I still laid completely still just stuck listening to this noise. Eventually a second noise started to emerge. 
It sounded about the same as the first noise. However, it was distinguishable like when two people speak. It was as if they were conversing back and forth. I started to move my arm against my mom while whispering, Mom, over and over to try and wake her up. Like I said before, she's an extremely light sleeper, but it looked like she was in a deep sleep. It got to the point I was basically shaking her and moving her around. Until finally her eyes shot open and in that moment she actually heard the last noise that came from the middle room. She looked petrified and the first thing she actually said to me was, that noise isn't from this world. After that the noises completely stopped. My mom got up and tried to open the door leading into the middle room as slowly as possible but it still made a lot of noise. The door opening woke my grandmother up. When we got into the middle room there was nothing in there and my dad was still completely all seat. I checked the time on my phone and it was around 3 a.m. Apparently both doors in the middle room were shut completely. When we started checking around the house we noticed that all the doors were left open. My grandmother said she opened them during the night which explains it. Extremely odd she would do something like that to say the least, but she is pretty old and can be unreasonable. We looked around and checked out the outside but aside from the doors nothing was out of place. All we could really do was close them again and go back to bed. The next morning I woke up to my mom talking about the event to my uncle and some other family friends who came over to have breakfast. She concluded on her own that it was Berger slash witch. I don't really know what it was. I only ever bring it up when a close friend talks about aliens or any odd occurrences. Hello, this is my first time posting in this sub, and I wanted to share a story that chilled me to the bone with permission from my grandpa of course. I'm a bit skeptical about this story, but the more I thought about it, the more horrifying it is. So, for a bit of background, I'm half Filipino and half American. Every summer my parents and I would visit the Philippines and usually stay at my grandparents' place. A week ago, my grandpa on my mom's side told me this true story from his youth. The way he said it, I noticed that he was still shaken and scared from whatever happened. So here's the story. Back in 1970, when my grandpa was 18, he was dating this girl who was a year younger than him for over a year, let's call this girl S. S was beautiful, sweet, kind, and easy on the eyes, according to him. When summer started, S invited him to her parents' home in the province. S was currently staying with her aunt while she went to school in my grandpa's town. My grandpa was skeptical at first because the area that S lived in was quite rural and would take five hours to arrive by bus. But, Grandpa was infatuated with S, so he said, eh, why the hell not? So, with permission from his parents, he packed up and he and S were on their way. When they arrived at her hometown, he noticed that a lot of people were staring at them. It was a small town, so the population wasn't that big. S showed him around where the shops were, the diners, etc. But Grandpa would notice people staring at them, and one time he heard a couple whisper, a swang. If you're wondering what the hell in a swang is, in Filipino folklore, an aswang is a malevolent, shape-shifting, flesh-eating monster. From what I learned, by the day they look and act like normal people, however at night they reveal their true selves. Back to the story, so S and Grandpa arrive at S's house. It was a large, three-story, wooden home. Grandpa then met S's parents, they greeted him warmly and invited him in, and exchanged talks over dinner. Grandpa said that they seemed like a couple of nice normal people. On the first night, he was sleeping in S's room on the second floor. Grandpa woke up hearing a strange noise. The first thing he noticed was that S was gone. He assumed that she must have went to the bathroom, so he lied down again. But the weird sound continued. It was coming from the floor above him. He said that it sounded like a cat scratching its claws on the wooden floor, accompanied by what sounded like a person mumbling. He tried to ignore it, but it started getting louder until he could hear multiple clawing noises from above, like multiple cats scratching on the wooden floor as well as mumbling. S still hasn't come back at this point, which made him worry. That's when he heard loud thumping from upstairs, like a person jumping. Grandpa is really weirded out at this point, so covers his ears with his pillow. The next day, he told S that their cats were really loud and that he couldn't sleep. S just looked at him confused and said, we don't have cats. Huh? That's weird, I could have sworn I heard cats last night. He said. On the second night, he was woken up again by the same sounds. He says, at that point he was thinking, what the F asterisk CK? Then he hears loud grunting from above like an animal in pain. He tries going back to sleep, but then he's startled by what sounded like a roar. This continues for another day until on the fourth night. Grandpa decided he had enough, he was gonna man up, march upstairs, and see what the hell was going on. So, it was around 1 in the morning, according to him. 
He said it was strange because he didn't hear any more of the weird sounds, but he decided to go upstairs anyway. He tiptoed across the floor and reached the stairs leading to the third floor. Once he reached the third floor, he notices something weird. The lights wouldn't work even though they were working fine before he went to bed. The only source of light was the moonlight which illuminated the interior. He makes his way to the room that was above him on the second floor where the sounds were coming from and what he saw made the hairs on the back of his neck stand up. The floor was littered with claw marks, the windows were wide open and there were blood stains across the floor. There were no signs of S or her parents anywhere. Freaked out, he went down back to the second floor. But then his nose caught a whiff of something he hadn't noticed before, it was coming from the kitchen. Curious, he went to take a look, but it was so dark that he could barely make anything out. As he walked, his hand touched something that felt like a large metal pot. He opened the lid, a great number of flies escaped, and his nose was assaulted in extremely awful, putrid smell that he said nearly made him vomit. It was so dark that he couldn't see what was inside the pot, so he immediately slammed down the lid and run back to the room and forced himself to sleep. The next day, during lunch, S's mother served Dinuguan animal blood that's been cooked and mixed with herbs and spices. But my grandpa excused himself and lied that he was sick, he didn't want to know what was in the food. S's mother tried to coax him to eat, saying that he'll regain his energy. This is when grandpa takes the opportunity to find out the truth. You see, in the folklore, to identify whether or not a person is in a swang is quite simple. Observe their eyes, if your reflection is upside down then they're in a swang. Grandpa stared at S's mom's eyes and reeled back in horror. His reflection was upside down. This is when the mom's expression completely changes. She went from concern to angry and was glaring hard at Grandpa, an expression that basically says, according to him, you shouldn't have done that. That night, Grandpa doesn't waste time and immediately packs up and heads home, lying that there's been a family emergency in order for him to go. He finally returns home and spent a lot of time inside his house in complete fear. The following month, he breaks up with S. She looked at him in sadness and said that she understands, that it was a wise choice for him, but it was quite a shame. Grandpa ended the story. He says that it was a huge shame indeed because he really wanted to marry S. What do you all think? What are your thoughts and opinions about this story? Edit, so I asked Grandpa for more info and details about the story. He said that he has trouble remembering a couple of things, but from he could recall. After the first night, he asked S where she went because he woke up and couldn't find her. S said that she was in the bathroom due to an irritable stomach. Then he asked about the weird noises last night and if she heard them. He said that she was silent for a moment before casually responding that sometimes a group of cats would climb up their roof. What a weird excuse. Hey, everyone. This is a story from when my brother and I were kids visiting the Philippines where our parents came from in Ilocos or Luzon. We were elementary school age at that time and so is that memory. This area is very country with rice fields and such. There were rarely any buildings higher than one story. The street the family home was one was dirt and unnamed. Our older cousins made my brother and I some slingshots. I loved that thing. It was made from the branches of some tree and elastic bands from a vulcanizing shop. After terrorizing the local animals I got in trouble and so I found this big discarded metal vegetable oil can for target practice. I set up the oil can on top of small table and put it in front of this bamboo clump. It made a nice loud metallic clunk noise so we had a blast until some older cousins came along. They said that we probably shouldn't be shooting there because a DeWin lived in that bamboo clump. Being a little know-it-all city punk I decided to ignore them. Besides, I was having fun. My little brother of course decided to follow my lead. Nothing happens until the following morning. My memory is also a little spotty and you'll soon understand why. I wake up with a really bad fever. I remember profusely sweating and having a pounding headache. I felt so weak I had a hard time moving unassisted. I couldn't even sit up. I remember my shirt being changed frequently, I was sweating so bad. I remember old women crowding into the room and praying over me. I remember candles with the Virgin Mary being lit. I remember being hit with big leaves. They might be Malungue Morina. Leaves. I remember being made to drink this dark reddish aromatic tea. I remember being carried to the bathroom to bathe in the same dark reddish aromatic tea. Then I remember one morning feeling absolutely fine. It was as if nothing happened. I don't know how long I was sick for. It may have been days. It may have been just 24 hours one and done. I don't remember. As for my brother, he didn't get sick, but one of his eyes got severely swollen. It was like he was smuggling a cue ball behind that thing. 
He said it didn't hurt when I asked him. His vision wasn't impaired. But boy did that thing get huge. No one really knew what to make of it and were kind of freaking out until Grandpa came to the rescue. He came with this small vial of rose oil that he put on top of the swollen area. The following morning it was completely gone. Our grandpa said he went to the bamboo clump with the rose oil and asked the Dewin for forgiveness for his dumbass grandsons. He prayed there for hours until he felt like something happened and that's when he came back with the rose oil. At least that's what people said when I asked when I got older. They also said my brothers I got swollen because he accidentally hit the Dewin in the eye while we were doing our target practice. Even though this happened decades ago, and that bamboo clump no longer exists, I still treat that area with reverence and respect. I will greet and say my farewells to the DeWind every time I pass through there. Because you never know. And it's the right thing to do. I have my own fair share of scary experiences, mostly paranormal such as seeing a red eye poke out in the tall grass, Santa toy fell and turned on but it doesn't have batteries, and witnessed two possessions, one in my classroom and during our field trip but the one that I will never forget lasted about a week. Long post ahead. It was early November in 2009 and we've just finished celebrating Day of the Dead here in the Philippines. We lived in a small subdivision surrounded by kind neighbors so we didn't really expect things to turn south that fast. It's just me, my brother, my mom and dad, grandfather and cousin who've been living in the house for about six months and so far, so good. My mom's store is doing great, first time being able to watch Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon, and I just started my Pokemon Fired playthrough then it happened. My cousin told us about the voices she hears at night and the constant banging she feels underneath her bed. We shrugged it off as some nightmare in days passed until she brought it up again but this time, she woke up nearby the stairs at 3am and that actually made my parents a little worried. I was a kid so I wasn't actually scared, tbh I'm actually pretty pumped to experience my first actual paranormal activity. My brother on the other hand was quiet for some reason. What my cousin told us the next day actually sent shivers down my spine. She was taking a bath and when she poured water on her back, it parted ways like someone or something was on her back. Initially, it wasn't that scary but I was reminded of Shudder and Boy, that scared me to death when we watched it, the scene on the ladder. It was then that my brother admitted that he can see spirits, actually, shadow and light figures and my dad actually experienced participating in an exorcism when he was still young. That events that proceeded to unfold are just horrifying thinking about it now that I'm older. We had our first exorcism and it wasn't what I expected it to be, she was just lying on the bed and saying weird stuff. I actually hoped that she'd levitate or rotate her head in GL. She was able to rip a page from the Bible before becoming stable. My brother heard voices of different genders and age. What's worse is that she had to sleep in our room since hers is cursed or something. She slept below the side where I usually sleep in and in that moment, I've never wanted to sleep as fast in my entire life. The thought of opening your eyes and she's floating above you or staring at you directly in your face, uh. The next day was kinda tame. My cousin was doing fine and my grandpa just happened to see a lady in a black veil coming down from the stairs into the kitchen which was just an extension of the house. I was outside that time as well as my parents and brother so not the type of news we'd wanna hear. The next day was the grand finale, good versus evil as I watch everything unfold while eating a bowl of pancit canton noodles. It was the worst she's ever been physically and it looked terrifying. She started doing incantations to which my dumb 10-year-old brain responded with more made-up incantations. I did not take it seriously at all. They decided to cleanse her room which was even more harder to do because of her brother participating in the cleanse and eventually getting possessed too. He looked at one of the images of my grandmother to which he described the eyes turning black and that's when he lost control. He was friggin' strong being able to take on my dad and priest assistant. Eventually, she threw up a black necklace and decided to do a kill it on the dance floor as witnessed by my kid brain. She looked into a mirror and just like that, it was over. They took care of the mirror and she was brought into church rehab. We didn't realize how many spectators we had outside of our house. We discovered that the owner of the house performed a ritual after the extension so yeah, we had to move out. I'm glad it's just the house that's haunted. She's doing fine now and so are we. According to some of our ex-neighbors, they still see figures inside her room when they walk past it. So I am quickly collecting many stories for my channel and my cousin recently told me this experience. 
He didn't want me to narrate it on my channel, but he allowed me to post it on here. This event happened to him when he was around 17 and was still living in our hometown of Arroyo, PR. He is now 36 and still remembers how horribly scary this was. He had a new girlfriend at the time, and his parents were very strict and didn't really let him hang out with her very late into the night. So naturally being a teenager, there was one night she came over and he sneaked out of his house to spend time with her. They decided they were going to walk to where the boardwalk was and hang out near the pier that overlooked the ocean. Now around this time that they were walking, he thinks it was maybe around 1 to 2 a.m., so there was no one in the area where they were. As they walked down the road that led to the boardwalk, there was an area that was completely all palm trees, and he thought he saw a person standing behind one of the palm trees. As he did a double take to look again, he saw nothing. They reached the pier and were now just relaxing and talking and leaning on the railings of the pier. My cousin still had a view of this forested palm tree area. All of a sudden he sees a traditional Puerto Rican hibaro just walk out of where the palm trees were. I'm going to very roughly describe what a hibaro with traditional attire looks like. This person had on an all white button down long sleeve shirt with his sleeves rolled up, all white pants with black dress shoes. Around his neck, he had a red bandana scarf and around his waist was a traditional red sash that wrapped all the way around. He also had on an island straw hat. Now what was extremely wrong with this particular person was not what they were wearing, but how they looked. My cousin said he was holding a bloody machete. The front of his white shirt was dripping and covered in blood. His face almost looked like a skeleton. His mouth did not have lips, only teeth were showing, and it was completely covered and dripping with blood. When he saw him, it did not look like a see-through apparition. It was a solid figure of a man. My cousin was completely shocked, and he didn't want his girlfriend to turn around in fear she would get freaked out, but after seeing his face, she turned around. She too had then seen this man walking out of the palm trees. He said he continued walking towards where the shoreline was and was now walking towards underneath the pier, which meant he was somewhere below them. They were both frozen solid and his girlfriend was silently shedding tears in front of him. Suddenly they both saw this man slowly walk back around from the other side of the shoreline and back into the middle of the road that was in front of where the palm trees were. He now stood there completely facing them, but didn't seem to notice that they were standing on the pier. He then did an about face and walked back towards the palm trees and slowly vanished. My cousin and his girlfriend at first slowly walked off the pier and back to the main road. As soon as they hit the corner of the road, they both started running as fast as they could back to my cousin's house. They made it back and were both so horrified and his girlfriend wouldn't stop shaking and crying. He ended up walking her back home so she wouldn't be alone. He had never experienced anything like that before and didn't really believe in ghosts until then. He didn't want to believe what he saw, but the fact that his girlfriend experienced it too only made it more real. He told me his girlfriend ended up asking around people that worked in the plaza around the boardwalk about what they saw, and she said that this was not the first time people had seen the bloody Hibaro. Apparently, he had been showing himself around that area of the pier for many years. This only served to freak my cousin out even more. He said every time he thinks about the Hibaro, he gets very scary chills up and down his back, which is why he never really told anyone about what he saw that night. He says there was just something very evil and wrong about the man he saw, and he didn't want to share it with anyone. So that's my cousin's story. Here is a photo of roughly what the man was wearing for reference. It is very traditional Puerto Rican Hibaro clothing. I'm from the Philippines currently living in Manila, but my mom is from Baikal. She told me about the story of how my grandpa went missing when he was still a kid. My grandpa was playing along the forest area of their neighborhood when suddenly he saw a copper. It was getting late and the area is getting dark when he saw the copper smoking a big cigar on top of a huge tree. The copper went down the tree and approached my grandpa and said, Gusto emo sumamasakan? In English, it translates to, do you want to go with me? My grandpa didn't have second thoughts and went together with the copper. He described the copper's house as luxurious. There are also other guests sitting on a very large table filled with delicious food. I'm guessing that these are encantos. 
They invited him to join the banquet and stay a bit longer, but he told the copper that he is worried that his mom and dad might get angry and scold him since he is still outside after dark. In my mom's province, they also implement the go home before it gets dark rule. The copper obliged to bring him back home, but asked my grandpa if he wants to come back and join the banquet some other time, he said he will need to ask his parents first. After that, he suddenly got teleported back to where he first met the copper. My grandpa described the sensation as sudden dizziness and dreamlike experience. My mom told me that a search party was sent out to find my grandpa because he has been missing for three weeks. FYI, the province is just a small island in Baikal near the Pacific Ocean where everyone knows everyone so it will be an easy search if a person has gone missing. They found him going down the path from the forest area at noon. The path has a small creek that has a log as a bridge so in order to cross, you need to balance yourself and hope you don't fall. The search party saw my grandpa effortlessly walk on that log. It's like someone was assisting him to get to the other side. Imagine a parent holding a child by the hand while crossing a difficult path. That was how they found my grandpa after searching the island to the point that they were almost hopeless. But it didn't end there. My great-grandma said that one time, grandpa was playing hide and seek with his friends. One of grandpa's friends thought that he is the best player of hide and seek because they couldn't find him anywhere. He wanted to know the location of grandpa's hiding place so he followed him hoping that they could hide together. He saw grandpa sit beside a tree and disappear without a trace. Grandpa's friend ran back to my great grandma's house to tell her that grandpa went missing again. When they both went out to go look for him, they saw him laughing with his other friends like nothing happened. After that incident, my great grandma asked where he went and thought that he's gone missing again. Grandpa told her that the copper also wanted to play hide and seek so he let the copper join the game. He said that the copper was covering him on their hiding spot, not knowing that he became literally invisible just by being covered by the sheer size of the copper. Grandpa told my mom that the copper was good and wanted them to become friends. He said that the copper was eager in inviting him back to his house to meet the other guests and meet new friends. He didn't accept the invitation because that was the day Grandpa and his uncle boarded the boat going to Manila. Thought I'd write out a creepy experience I had while working on a farm in a remote part of southern Trinidad, right on the coast, with Venezuela's Amazon rainforest across the water. One night some neighbors were hanging out in our common room, chatting about anything and everything. The topic of the paranormal came up, and one man said that a couple nights ago he had seen a large orange fireball rise out of the ground of the local cricket pitch and fly away in the sky. Wow! I said. Sounds like you saw a UFO, I'm Canadian, and didn't know about the local folklore. That was no UFO, he said, that was a sacunia. What's that? I asked. He proceeded to explain what this creature was and everyone else in the room solemnly agreed. It was some of the most far-fetched stuff I'd ever heard but the atmosphere was dead serious. He told me that a Sakunya is a witch, an old crone who lives in the jungle or the outskirts of towns. These women have created a pact with a dark entity that allows them very prolonged lifespans. The way they maintain their lives for so many years is vampirism, they enter people's homes at night, invisible, and suck their blood. They shed their skin and become a fireball and fly around. They can enter people's homes through a space as small as a keyhole. The only way to kill them is by tracking down the location that the old woman left her skin during the night and throwing salt on her skin. As you can imagine, this was pretty damn trippy to hear. It gave me the creeps, especially because multiple people in the room told their own very personal experiences with the witch, including one guy whose wife had her blood sucked while in bed with him. Apparently she woke up pale and blue and she had human-sized bite marks all over her body. It took weeks for her to regain her strength. Freaky! Here's where it gets freakier. A couple nights later I was sleeping in my cinder block bedroom. I'm dreaming and all of a sudden my dream becomes very sharp, very focused and very real. I see my own body sleeping. I look up through the ceiling and see above the house a fireball has just flown in. I sense a terrifying power from this fireball and I feel this witch looking at me, wondering whether to strike. I try to wake myself up desperately as this fireball contemplates whether to enter the house and suck my blood, she wants me. Just as she's about to fly in, her attention shifts violently to the corner of my room. She focuses on a small black and white stone egg that my mother gave me for good luck while traveling. 
that egg breaks her thirst for me and she flies away. The second she takes her attention off my room, I wake up screaming in a cold sweat. In other words, the stone egg protected me. It's a wild story and maybe it was all in my head, but it felt incredibly real. Hope you enjoyed. I lived with my great-grandma when I was little in the Dominican Republic. At night when the electricity went out in the very small rural town we lived in she would sit all of the great-grandchildren on the porch and tell us stories. My family is from indigenous origins and my great-grandma looked very very Indian. She would tell us that her grandfather was a rebel and always getting in trouble for something so he was persecuted and always being chased by either other rebels, Indians, or the authorities. She would tell us that when he was being chased at night he would turn into tree stumps and rocks or bushes to get away and they would never catch him. I don't know if it was true, but she always told stories like this about our family. Some of them were horrifying. An aswang is a monster in Filipino mythology that preys on pregnant women. Unlike the grisly attacks usually shown in horror movies, however, these monsters apparently just prey on the life essence of the unborn baby until it dies and the mother miscarries. The scary part is that these monsters are also part human, meaning they could literally be anyone during the day. This happened in Metro Manila at around 2011. My cousin told me, the old man with the new neighbors asked me if you were pregnant. I was shocked. I never even told my family yet. I was 21 and work nights in a call center. I never go outside when I'm home and I was only a few weeks along so I know I wasn't showing yet. How did this nosy old man know? The said neighbors were new in town, coming from one of the more popular provinces in the Philippines where witchcraft and aswangs are still the norm. They were friendly enough, though, so no one really had anything bad to say about them other than the nasty rumor that they know about a swing. When I was about 8 months along, I was watching late night TV with my brother at around 2am. Something big landed on our tin roof, strong enough to rattle the windows. My brother and I looked at each other with wide eyes as we listened to the footsteps, yes, footsteps, stop right on top of me. I was never a prayerful person, but at that moment I called on gods and saints and angels to protect my baby. Then I remembered my grandmother's story about how she escaped in a swing attack by placing a pillow between her legs to mask the baby scent, so I did just that. We had no idea how long we waited, seconds, minutes, but we heard another jump and then silence. Until this day I was glad that my brother was with me to vouch for me. I still could believe it happened, and it happened to me. Then I remembered the nosy old man. Could it have been him? Something weird and mysterious and unfinished, I suppose. In any part of the world you may go, there will be a legend about a monster with a hungry for human blood. Even in the South America country of Guyana, stories are told of a vampire-like entity called the Olhig that comes out at night to feed off sleeping victims, often being children and babies. This creature is described to hide within a village in the form of an old woman often overlooked as some not threatening. At night, she sheds her skin transforming into a ball of fire or an insect. The old heeg would fly to the home of her next victim, often said to enter through keyhole, drain the person's blood then return home to put her skin back on. Guyana legends mention of several ways of dealing with the creature. To ward off the vampire simply place rice in front of doors and windows as myths say she can't pass or walk over the grains. A method to eliminate the old heek involves using the keyhole she tries to enter through by placing the key to a horizontal position leaving a gap allowing her to partially enter. The idea here is as she struggles through, the key would rattle waking anyone in the household who can kill her by simple turning the key and crushing her causing the sudden appearance of bones on the doorstep. Another approach to killing off the creature involves finding the shed skin and filling it with hot peppers as it would burn her to death the next time the old heek wears it.